afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Jake, as just been introduced, uh, an assistant engineer for Leicestershire County Council. I've been working on setting up the SAB for Leicestershire County Council for the past 18 months, and I'm here to talk to you today about um, Grangewood Manor in Leicester Forest East, developed by Taylor Wimpy East Midlands, and it's the first site that Leicestershire County Council have considered for adoption that's got a full uh, sustainable drainage strategy. Um, so the location, it's um, just off Beggars Lane in Leicester Forest East, the name kind of gives it away, it's just to the east of Leicester City and uh, it's this red hatched area here, um, it's a greenfield site and we had the benefit of a little bit of space to play with here. So what I want to talk to everyone today about, the drivers, um, what brought the site forward, the site itself, relationships and communication with various stakeholders throughout the process, the design criteria and the evaluation, challenges that we've faced as a local authority, the adoption mechanism, lessons learned and, and just a brief summary. So the drivers. Um, <laughs> Like I've just mentioned, Leicestershire County Council have set up a, a SAB team um, and we are holding working groups with developers and local planning authorities. Um, this is giving them the opportunity to input into the process that we're making because they are going to be the end user after all. The purpose of the working groups are to encourage developers to do some trial sites which is in turn going to give us some case studies for a, a local design guide, SUDS design guide. Um, create awareness for, for SUDS, not only for the developers and the LPAs, but we're also trying to get that message across to the public. Um, it's given us an opportunity to learn lessons and familiar, familiarise ourselves with the process prior to Schedule 3 coming into place. And it's hopefully going to allow for a, um, an easier transitional period once Schedule 3 is in place. So the site, um, a quick run through, there was a 145 dwellings to go on this area. There's one access coming off of uh, Beggars Lane here, and the road layout is very much a loop, one, one major loop with a number of sort of cul-de-sacs and spurs coming off. On this plan, all of the blue lines are either swales, ditches, or filter strips. Uh, so you can see they're really integrated with the site throughout the whole site, not just a deep pond at the bottom of the site, which is what we usually see. Um, picture of that swale there has actually been constructed at the front of the site, nicely grassed up. Um, there's legs of permeable paving on the secondary roads, not on the main loop road through, but on some of the secondary and tertiary roads. And then there's a a fairly large detention or attenuation basin to the south of the site. I'll talk about these in a little bit more detail as we go through the presentation. So relationships, there were various stakeholders involved in the process. Taylor Wimpy, East Midlands, the developer. Uh, JPP Consulting, who actually did the design. Leicester County Council, who I represent the local authority. And we're a two-tiered authority, so Blaby District Council were the local planning authority. Communication was absolutely vital throughout the whole process, and we really couldn't have took this site forward without a really strong working relationship. So preliminary meetings were held at the pre-application stage. There were the developer, the local authority, engineers, architects, a lot of different disciplines around the table and that was that was vital so every, everyone could have an input of what they wanted and why. A drainage strategy was agreed that worked w well with the site conditions so we took into consideration the topography and the ground conditions. The drainage strategy was then a key influence on the layout as well as other things such as access to the sustainable drainage features for maintenance because we're, we're going to be adopting them. Um, public open space, ecology, existing services and so on. Once the drainage strategy was agreed, 
uh, the design criteria was discussed and we all agreed that we needed to meet the vision of the Flood and Water Management Act and the, and the SUDS manual. So obviously we wanted to tick all three boxes of the SUDS triangle, get some water quality, quantity and also amenity and biodiversity. Further meetings took place once the design was completed and I received a formal package of drawings from JPP Consulting. Um, the package of drawings not only had all of the drainage details but also all of the infrastructure, so the road layout as well. I appraised and well, myself and my team appraised um, the drawings and we made sure that all of the SUDS features were in accordance with Sirius C697. We checked the inlet and outlet uh, details with our in-house drainage engineers and JPP, the design consultant that did all of the hydraulic modelling, we got our in-house drainage engineers to check that as well to make sure that the site could deal with all storm water events. The strong working relationship continued all the way through to construction stage. Um, the site's still being constructed now. It's been, it's been on ground for maybe a year or so, and there's still quite a lot to go. We're still meeting on site today to discuss lessons that we're learning and ways forward. Um, as I've said, this is sort of the first big site that we've considered for adoption that's got a sustainable drainage strategy. Um, and some minor details are actually being changed on site as we speak. For example, this is the inlet to the attenuation or detention basin at the south of the site. The original design that we approved didn't have any slope protection um, here. When we're on site, these, ditch, these two ditches here both fall in opposite directions and come down. We looked on site and we thought in heavy rainfall events we're going to get some sort of erosion there so let's let's stabilize that and and that's what we've decided to do we've agreed with the developer that we'll have a small section of slope stability and hopefully that will last a lot better another example of sort of changing slight details throughout the process this is the outfall of the detention basin this is the outlet pipe and this is a, a gabion mattress which is classed as sort of a spillway and that wasn't in the original design. We've gone out there, we've seen that there's, there's that pond, it's all got one level around, around the top, we've got an outfall and then an overspill pipe. We thought in worst case scenario, if those two outlets get blocked up, where's the water gonna go? It's gonna flood everywhere. Simple solution, design out all risk just lower one section of the pond by 100, 150 mil, put in a gabion mattress, and if ever the outfall does get blocked up, the water's always going to go through this gabion mattress and back out into the ditch, which then goes down into some sort of farmer's fields, ditches, and, and away in, into ordinary water course. We have had a lot of challenges uh, with this site because it's the first, and I'd be lying if I, ha if I said... We hadn't spent a lot of time on it. We have spent more time on this than we would do on other traditional sites. But the positive spin on that is that time we're spending now, hopefully we're going to save later on. Not only later on with this specific site, but later on with other sites once Schedule 3 is implemented. Um, there were a lack of standards, especially local standards and guidance. We overcame that by doing a lot of research, um, contacting other authorities such as Oxfordshire, uh, Essex, Cambridgeshire. Um, use a little bit of common sense. SUDS isn't complete rocket science if you can get your head around it. And we also spoke to our in-house drainage engineers to make sure they were happy with what we were proposing. We were also a little bit concerned about how these features that we were proposing to adopt would perform after time. Uh, so again, we did a lot of research. There's case studies on the, inter on the internet. Syria have also got a lot of case studies out there that we did a lot of looking at. And we're collecting commuted sums for all of the SUDS features that we're proposing to adopt so we can allow for ongoing maintenance throughout the, throughout the life of the features. Um, similarly to Barry, we are adopting the SUDS features under Section 38 of the Highway Act, um, although we're adopting all of ours under Section 38, none of them are in, under a 106 on, on this site. Our 
thought there was a lot of the SUDS features are already within the highway. The permeable paving is within the highway. And the other, the other SUDS features we thought we could class as highway verge. A lot of the um, shallow swales with very shallow uh, side slopes, all one in four, easy for a mower to get on and maintain. Um, and again, we're collecting commuted sums to make sure that we've got money to maintain. Anything that we'll do differently next time, um, there's a good example here actually where we probably should have worked a little bit closer with the local planning authority and their ecologists and landscape architects. The picture's a little bit dark, but all, all three of these pictures are an example of a swale next to um, a hedge line. There was a root protection zone on the hedge which meant that the swale had to be offset by, I think it was a metre or two metres. And that strip of land in between the hedge and the swale really is unusable. It's undevelopable, there's, there's no footpaths down there, it's just a strip of really wasted land. On site, looking at it, we really, if we could have negotiated, we could have had a natural uh, profile of the existing ditch down one side, the man-made swale on the other, it would have looked more natural, that's where the water wants to be anyway. We've actually had to cut grips from the existing hedgerow ditch into this swale because the water's at the moment following the hedge line. I just think we really could have had a better product if we had have done a, a little bit more liaison. Um, something else we would have done differently. I've been uh, civil engineering for eight years since I left, uh, since I left school and when we were agreeing this site, I very much had my engineering hat on rather than maybe a greener approach. And it was agreed that we would take this attenuation basin if it was designed dry and it was like grass, basically, so we could easily get our maintenance guys on there, get a mower on there. It's easy to maintain. It's a usable area for people to go and play football, walk their dog. Looking back and looking at other SUD sites that I've seen over the past 12 to 18 months. I think we probably could have agreed a bit of a greener, better um, feature there. I think we could have had maybe a, a, low, uh, a low flow channel around the outside, micro pools, reed beds, trees, picnic tables, creating habitats, um, maybe a footpath around the top for people to walk their dogs. The list is endless. I think we really could have gone to town with that feature. When, when you're there on site, it's probably not far off the size of a football pitch, so it, it's pretty big. Um, one of the beauties is there are other parcels of land around um, that are in for planning permission, and I think we may be able to agree a bit of a retrofitted sort of scheme further down the line. Failing that, the commuted sum monies that Leicestershire County Council uh, have collected, we might be able to use some of them funds to retrofit a scheme and further down the line. The swales on the site were designed slightly deeper than they needed to be. Uh, similarly to the last site, they're under drain swales. There's a perforated pipe under that stone there. They are slightly deeper and that was to allow plot drainage into them. It's a first and we wanted to be at the forefront of what's going to be happening once Schedule 3, uh, once the button's pressed for that. So we've had it a little bit deeper. The benefit of that is it's easy for the swale to get under the carriageway where need be. We've not had to have any sort of safety features or big head walls. It's all shallow graded down. It's all, it all looks neat and natural, natural-ish. <laughs> um, and the lesson learned there really is that a combination of uh, you know, pipe systems and sustainable systems will still give good sustainable results. Um, Lessons learned, any good practice to share? Yes, be brave, be willing to try something new. There's four legs of permeable paving on this site that all act as uh, storage for storm water. The sub base for this is really, really loose. I was actually on site when it was put down and when you walk over it, it was really loose underfoot, you know, and getting a, paved vehicle, a paving machine over that. We just thought we were going to have some really big issues. So we, we met this site uh, contractor, we met with the developer, 
we discussed ways forward and we decided that what we'd do is try or four slightly different construction methodologies on four of the permitted paved roads. So the first one, we decided to do two hand layers, uh, both done in the same day. This, and that was on the smaller stretch of road. We didn't think there was uh, much risk in getting that hand laid. And we were promised that the laying gang were very, very good and capable of doing it by hand. Yeah. Um, option two was to lay the first layer again by hand, so you're sort of knitting it all together and then get a, a paving machine over the top for the second layer, ready to put the blocks on further down the line. The third option, which is actually recommended in some Syria guidance, was to get a tracked paving machine over and do it in one, one hit. And the fourth one, which I've had discussions with some Suds gurus, they're not too keen on, but to knit the top together with sort of 20, 30 mil uh, type one blinding and then just get a paving machine over that just to sturdy that sub base up. The benefit of trying all four is we're gaining good experience. We've got something to write about in our design guide and something to sort of tell developers to what does work and what doesn't work in the future. Um, how we came together throughout the whole process, it, it really was meetings, emails, phone calls. That communication was absolutely key right from day one be before planning was even permitted all the way through. And how it's going to impl uh, influence our approach to implementing the Flood and Water Management Act as a council. Well, again, we've realised how important it is to all get around a table really early. And the design and application process that Leicestershire County Council have, well, we're in the middle of making at the moment, really does highlight the need for developers to get to us at an early stage to discuss what they want to do with their drainage. Um, so a quick summary, we've talked about the drivers as to why we've, we sort of went with the site, the importance of communication and relationships, um, the design criteria and, and the evaluation, challenges and, and lessons. Um, again, it's a first for us, so we're going to be learning lessons and we probably will be learning more lessons for the considerable future. I would just say to anyone else in a local authority here that hasn't trialled any sites, give it a go, give yourself some sound knowledge and experience for when Schedule 3 is implemented. Thanks for listening. <laughs>